G'day friends, it's Andrew Goodall here again from Nature's Image Photography and welcome to another of my How I Took This Photo videos. Have you ever noticed how there seems to be so much content on YouTube about how to edit your photos but not nearly enough content on how good photos are taken in the first place? Well I don't know if that bothers you but it kind of bothers me so that's where this series of tutorials comes in. Today I'm going to be talking about how this macro shot of a bee was taken. But before we get started, I'll invite you to hit the subscribe button so you can stay in touch with all my new videos as they're released. So here's the subject of today's video and if you have done any macro photography, you would already know how hard it can be to get a sharp photo, especially with a moving subject and a handheld camera. So it was important that I did my job just right for this photo to work. I'll start by telling you this photo was taken in natural light. There are quite a few different approaches to macro photography and some of them use special flash techniques. Just to be clear, this was done the old fashioned way using natural sunlight and good old aperture, shutter speed and ISO. For people who like to know about the gear, this was taken on my Tamron 90mm macro lens. You really can't take shots like this with a regular telephoto lens because even though they may have strong magnification, they simply don't let you focus from very close to the subject. My 90mm gives me a decent magnification, but it also lets me focus from just 10 or 15 centimetres away from the subject. Now there are two main issues you always need to deal with when you're working with macro photography. One of them is camera shake. If you're this close to such a tiny subject, it only takes the tiniest amount of camera movement to ruin the photo. So you really have two choices. You have to use a tripod or a super fast shutter speed. The other issue is depth of field. Your basic theory tells you that the closer you get to the subject, the shallower the depth of field becomes. This is great for regular telephoto photography because we can easily have our subject in focus and the background out of focus. As we get closer, the depth of field gets shallower and the background gets even softer. But once we get into macro territory, depth of field can become so tight that you can't even get a whole ant in focus. That means your focus has to be absolutely precise because if things are out by just a millimetre, you've lost your shot. Ok, so macro gives you very little margin for error, but let's face it, if there was no challenge we wouldn't bother and you wouldn't be watching this video. So now let's look at how I went about getting this shot right. First we'll take a look at the camera settings. I couldn't use a tripod because I was chasing a living subject that was moving from flower to flower, so I had to take the photo handheld, which means using a very fast shutter speed. Simply to eliminate camera shake, I want to be taking a shot like this at at least a thousandth of a second. But because I'm dealing with a moving subject which is constantly flitting its wings, I want to go even faster. I start by putting my ISO up to 800. This is unusual for bright daylight because for most types of photography 200 ISO is all I would need. But because of my need for that extremely fast shutter speed, I don't mind putting it up. My aperture was f5.6. Remember this lens opens to f2.8, but by closing the aperture down a couple of stops, that helps with the depth of field issue. And with those two settings in place, my shutter speed came to a 32 hundredth of a second, which is the kind of speed I was looking for. With camera settings figured out, now it's time to talk focus. The autofocus method I used for this shot is the same as I use for the majority of my work. My autofocus area mode is set to single point. That way I can make sure the camera focuses on the bee and not somewhere else on the flower. And my autofocus mode is on one shot. That's where if I focus and hold my finger down on the button, the focus stays locked in place. I find this useful for macro photography. It means I can focus once and if the bee moves out of focus, I can keep my finger on the button and move myself a tiny bit back and forward until it becomes sharp again. This is often easier than having to ask the camera to refocus every couple of seconds. Ok, so we're almost there. The final question I want to address is that problem with depth of field. Firstly, this is the reason I had my aperture set to f5.6 instead of wide open at f2.8. The smaller aperture gives me just a tiny bit more depth of field, so that's a start. Remember I said before that in the world of macro photography it can be hard to get a whole ant in focus. In fact this shot was taken at f7.1, which technically means it should have had a bit more depth of field. But there's an important difference between the ant shot and the bee shot. The ant is facing the camera head on, so its body is angled away. That means when I focus on the head, the butt is inevitably going to be out of focus. But the bee is shut from side on, which means the body is parallel to the camera. So if the entire side of the bee is the same distance from the camera, I can focus on any part of it, 
and have a good chance of getting it all in focus. So for this shot, the fact that my bee is mostly sharp is not because of miraculous depth of field, it's really because of the positioning of the bee, and that is really just a matter of patience and timing. There's one final aspect that helps with the depth of field in this shot, and maybe it's a bit sneaky that I haven't told you this before. You see, I wasn't really this close when I took the photo. In fact, this is the full length of the picture right here, so I was a bit further back than you thought I was. So now you might be thinking, oh no, he tricked us, it was all a lie and he's not as clever as he thinks he is. Okay, well that's one way of looking at it, but think of it this way. If the problem that you're having is that the closer you get, the shallower the depth of field becomes. If your depth of field is too shallow, sometimes the best solution is simply to get a little bit further back. Right away, your depth of field increases. It's still a macro photo, it's just one that requires a bit of cropping. And there you have the story of how this photo was taken. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and most importantly, I hope you've learned something. Once again, don't forget to click subscribe so you can stay in touch with new videos as they're released. I'm Andrew Goodall of Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.